Hello and welcome to this video on model identification in structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually present an analysis in the Mplus software and on Thursdays I talk about more general issues in structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis or latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free resources including a link to my weekly statistics newsletter as well as free courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video I want to explain model identification in structural equation modeling on a conceptual level so rather than dealing with equations in this presentation I want to show you an M plus example of an under identified model, a just identified model and an over identified model so that you get the basic idea about what it means for a model to be identified versus unidentified or under identified versus just identified. So let's get right to it and let's take a look at the syntax for a very simple factor analytic model. So this is a very small structural equation model. In, in this case it's just the measurement model where we have a single factor here labeled factor and that factor is measured by two indicators y1 and y2 so y1 and y2 are the observed variables taken from the list of variables in our data set here so the total data set contains four variables and we're just picking two out of those four variables and we're using them as indicators of a single factor so when we run the model like this in M plus then what we get here when we scroll down is this warning message that says the degrees of freedom for this model are negative. The model is not identified. No chi-square test is available. Check your model. And then there's also a, an error message about standard errors and again the indication that the model may not be identified. And so this shows you that when you have a model, a factor model, with a single factor and just two indicators and you're trying to estimate factor loadings freely for at least one of the indicators then that model is not identified and so let's take a look at some more of this output and some and try to understand what happened here when we scroll down you can see that the chi-square test of model fit which is used for model assessment is has negative degrees of freedom the value is zero and the degrees of freedom are negative and so whenever you have a model where this occurs where you have negative degrees of freedom then the model must be under identified or unidentified as we say so having zero or positive degrees of freedom is a necessary condition for model identification so a negative degree of freedom model must always be under identified. A model that has zero or positive degrees of freedom can be identified. It doesn't have to be identified. There can be models with positive degrees of freedom that are still under identified. So that makes the whole thing a little bit more tricky. But here we definitely know a model like this could not be identified. And let's take a look at why that is the case. When we go down to the parameter estimates you can see here under model results in the estimates column that the first factor loading was automatically fixed by M plus so this is a default in M plus and other programs for structural equation modeling that one loading per factor is fixed for identification so that the factor can have a metric and so that's so say, always necessary to either fix a loading or fix the variance of the factor directly for identification. However, in this case that wasn't sufficient to just fix one loading because with two indicators, as we will see, we don't have very much information to estimate parameters from and so fixing just one loading here wasn't sufficient for model identification. You can see that the second loading M plus attempted to estimate and this loading here has an estimate which you can see from the fact that the standard error here is not zero 
you can see that the standard error is extremely high relative to the estimate of the loading so that shows you we can't trust these estimates because the model as a whole was under identified so we get this enormously huge standard error here and the loading wouldn't be significant um, at the 0.05 level or any level 0.982 is the p-value so that would be unusual to have a factor loading that is not significant when you have two measures and you think that they measure a common factor then the loading should be significant so again that's because of this enormous standard error which is related to the model I, the model non-identification issue intercepts are estimated so as additive constants in this factor model the factor variance is estimated and again you can see the factor variance has an extremely large standard error which is again a symptom of that model non-identification problem and we also have residual variance estimates with again abnormally huge standard errors so the whole model results section here is not trustworthy so you gotta be careful when you have a non-identified model because you still get estimates and standard errors at least in some cases like here but you shouldn't interpret them because this model was not identified. So pay attention to that warning message in your software. Now, this shows us that we have one, two, three, four, five, six free parameters. So one loading, one loading is fixed, so that doesn't count as a free parameter, but the second loading is free. So that's one parameter, two intercepts that makes three parameters, a factor variance makes four parameters and two residual variances. So we have a total of six free model parameters to estimate here. However, we only have five pieces of information that we can use when we have two variables. And you can see that from going back up in the output file here from the descriptive statistics uh, section, you can see that with two variables y1 and y2 we have only two means and we have only two variances which you can get here from the covariance matrix and we have the one covariance between y1 and y2 so we have a total of five pieces of information only that we can use the correlation here doesn't count extra because it is a direct function of the covariance and the two variances so this is not an independent piece of information so we can only count the um, two variances and the covariance from the covariance matrix and the two means so we have five pieces of information but the model contained six free parameters and that's why you get one negative degree of freedom here because we have more free parameters than we have pieces of information that we can estimate parameters from. And that's a general thing, so to say, whenever you estimate a factor model, a confirmatory factor model, or a structural equation model, or a path analytic model, you can count the number of means, variances, and covariances in your observed data, and those are the pieces of information that you can use. And that's so to say limits the number of parameters that you can estimate because you cannot estimate more parameters than you have um, pieces of information meaning means variances and covariances and so this means we have to either reduce the number of parameters in our model to where they are no greater than the pieces of information that we have or we have to add more information to the model meaning more variables so if we had for example another factor indicator then we would have uh, another mean we would have another variance and we would have two more covariances which then would make the model identified as well but let's stick with this simple model with just um, two indicators let's go back to our syntax and let's see how we can make this model identified one way to identify this model with just two indicators is to assume essential tau equivalence which means equal factor loadings and so in this case the first factor loading is already by default fixed to one as we saw now what we can do is we can also fix the second factor loading to one then it means the two variables have equal loadings and that implies essential tau equivalence meaning the variables share the same true score variable except for an additive constant or for a difference in means we could say 
And so then we're taking away one free parameter from the list of unknowns, then reducing the number of parameters from six to five. And we know we have five pieces of information. And in this case, it can be shown that um, with those five pieces of information, we can identify the remaining five parameters. So we have a just identified model in that case with zero degrees of freedom where each parameter has um, a unique solution and where there's one and only one way to identify each parameter. So let's take a look at this um, to, so you can see that this model is actually identified. Let's see what M plus gives us. When we scroll down, we can see that there's no more warning message about under identification. We only get the message that the model estimation terminated normally. And when we look at the chi-square, you can see now the chi-square has zero degrees of freedom instead of negative one. And it's zero, which means that this model is a perfect fit. And that must be the case for saturated or just identified models. So when we have an identified model with zero degrees of freedom, we call this model a saturated model because it uses all the information in the data to estimate parameters. It saturates our observed data and there's nothing left over that can be tested with the model. And so then trivially, a model like this has a perfect fit. The p-value here is given incorrectly by M+. Plus. It should be given as 1.0 because the um, model here is a perfect fit. But so that's so say a trivial piece of information anyway. With a saturated model, the chi-square must be zero with zero degrees of freedom. Scrolling down, we can see that now we have equal factor loadings. They're both fixed to one. And so that is um, in line with the assumption of essential tau equivalence. And so when we are willing to assume essential tau equivalence for our variables, then the model can be identified. And that, of course, is a theoretical question whether it makes sense that these two variables um, are essentially tau equivalent, share the same true score variable, except for differences in means. In this case, it is reasonable, but it may not be in other situations. So you can see the remaining five parameters the two intercepts, the factor variance, and the two residual variances are now estimated and their standard errors look reasonable. So you no longer have this under identification problem. And so these parameters then are properly estimated and they can be interpreted. And so this model can be useful because it provides in the standardized solution the standardized factor loadings, which can be interpreted as correlations between the variables and the factor, and it provides R squared values for the observed variables as well, which can be interpreted as reliability estimates in the sense of test theory, classical test theory. So under the assumption of essential tau equivalence, those would give us the reliabilities of each scale or each variable, y1, y2. And you can see that the reliabilities here are between 0.586 and 0.674 for those two variables. So that's useful information. So you can see that a saturated model or just identified model can be useful because it allows us in this case here to estimate the reliabilities of these variables. Now, what about over-identification? Could we also obtain an over-identified model with just two indicators? We could by making an additional assumption from test theory. So another model of classical test theory is a model of essentially parallel variables where the error variances are also set equal. So then we have parallel or essentially parallel measurement when we assume equal loadings and equal error variances. And that takes away another parameter because if we set the error variances equal, then the, the error variance parameter has to be estimated only once. And we don't have two independent estimates of the error variances, which takes away one additional parameter. And so this can be done in M plus by simply putting the variable names in another um, line here and then giving a label such as, for example, E var for error variance or residual variance. And then it sets the error variances of these two variables equal. 
let's run that model also and take a look at that. And so here we can see again no error message. The model is identified and now it is over identified. We get one degree of freedom. You can see here for the chi-square test and the chi-square is no longer zero because now the model can be falsified. It could be incorrect. We're testing the assumption of equal variances of the variables now with this model. And so that is a testable restriction. It restricts the variances of our observed data to be equal in the population. And you can see that the p-value is 0.05. And so here it's just a borderline significance. So the model could be rejected at the 0.05 level. And um, this is due to the fact that the variances here are not so similar. So you can see that the observed variances are 68.57 and 59.63. The model restricts those variances to be equal and that constraint or that restriction is not quite in line with our data. So it is rejected. And so assuming that these model, these variables are essentially parallel, and have the same reliabilities is here not um, acceptable. It's not an acceptable constraint according to the chi-square test of model fit. This model would be rejected. Let's take a look at the output and here you can see that now not only the factor loadings are set equal but also the residual variances. They're both estimated to the exact same well value of 23.93 with the exact same standard error and test statistic and so that, so say, then results in one degree of freedom because now we have only four independent model parameters, the two intercepts, the factor variance, and one error variance. So we have only four parameters left and we have five pieces of information in our data as before and therefore we have one degree of freedom. And that's the one degree of freedom for the test of equal variances, which here resulted in a significant chi-square value, meaning that this, the assumption of equal variances has to be rejected. Under this model, if we could accept it, the reliabilities of the variables would be equal also. You can see that here from the R squared value. So under this restriction of equal loadings and equal error variances, the R squared values will be the same as well. And that makes this model convenient because then we have um, measures with equal reliabilities. But in this case, we can't assume that because we saw that the model was rejected. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about model identification. If you did, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to check out the description for additional free resources. And I'll see you next time.